name's Solly Townsend, and I'm the co-founder and managing director of a marketing company. I do everything that a marketing company does. We do we're what's called 360 degrees. We do advertising, we do PR, we do design and web, but we do it only for one client, and that's sustainable development. Now, we take other people's money to do it for that client, and some of the people's money who I take are um, Sky, Virgin, um, Microsoft, etc. And also, at one point last year, for about a two-week period, financially, my company's two biggest clients were Shell and Greenpeace. I'm deeply amusing. I must be one of the only people ever in Amsterdam to take a cab from Shell's offices to Greenpeace's offices. <laughs> so much so that the cab driver pointed out that it was a bit weird. <laughs> Neither of them seemed to mind. I was quite worried about the whole situation. But we will work with anybody who we think with a specific target audience and is trying to do something which we think will get the message, the message across. Um, everyone feeling a bit hot and sweaty? Yeah? Okay, I'm going to get you hot and sweaty. Can you all get into pairs, please? Just make eye contact with someone and get into a pair. You're like, oh, so we do that really soon. Okay? Okay, give me your pairs. Okay, we're reaching into my 15 minutes, so we're all grown up, so assume that you can easily get into pairs. Um, and can I ask Simon to come with my lovely assistant? <laughs> climate change to the other one. So one of you will go first, and then the other one of you will have 30 seconds. However, if you're not the person who's explaining, you're allowed to say anything, any one word to the other person, and they have to integrate the words that you've just dropped on them into what they're talking about. So, <laughs> so would you like to explain climate change to me? <laughs> Climate change is a, a, a change that, that, that affects the weather all over the world because greenhouse gas emissions that humans are responsible Shop for Chocolate biscuit. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, is, is causing uh, severe damage to all sorts of sectors of the economy, including agriculture, including people who make wheat, that of course is a vital ingredient in chocolate biscuits. And, um, Lipstick. Um, and also um, is involved in uh, all sorts of very key chemical uh, production processes. I can do this all day. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now just be aware. Going first is hard, but going second is harder. So, um, if you'd like to make decide who's going to go first, I'll say go, and that first person starts talking, another person drops some words, and then I'll say stop and stop. Okay, so five, four, three, two, one, go! Climate porn, climate <laughs> pornography. 
It's almost as if we make this so huge and so cinematic and so scary, we're kind of enjoying it. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, you know, everybody likes a good disaster movie. It's kind of, it's kind of, mm, it's kind of fun. It's kind of visceral and real. And that doesn't mean for a moment that I don't think that actually this is the biggest fucking scary thing on the face of the planet. In my lifetime, my parents' lifetime, probably not my grandparents' lifetime, being they got the Second World War. But this is, you know, this is, I'm not detracting in any way from the scale of the magnitude of the problem, but just making a point about the language, which is what, um, which is what Sammy just went through. Now, I'm going to whip very quickly through some tactics that we've learnt with our various clients, including climate change communication strategies for the UK government, which I'm, and questions I'm happy to take some more questions about, um, in China, in Southeast Asia, and we've just got a foothold in the US in writing a climate change communication strategy for New Jersey. Hooray. That's going to change the world. So, a couple of things. First of all, the bad news. Things, things to be really aware of that are going to go on in people's head when you start talking about this. And the first one is called the bystander effect. <laughs> bystander effect really, really pisses me off. Basically, it means that the more people who are aware of the problem, the less any one individual is to take action on it. In fact, if you're ever in a road accident, you better be hope that only one person sees it. Because if one person sees it, they'll cause an ambulance. If six people see it, they'll stand around watching you. And in fact, the advice that I got from a first aider is if you're still conscious, point at someone and say, please call an ambulance. <laughs> because no one person will do. Climate change suffers from the biggest, baddest bystander effect ever. It's not just that we as individuals see a bystander effect, you know, everybody else knows about it, so somebody else is doing something about it. Countries seem to be feeling a bystander effect about it. Well, there's no point us doing anything because of China and India and etc. Just be aware that with the problem, the more people that know about it, the actual less likely any one of those individuals is to act. Another thing to be aware of when we're doing this is, guys, we live in a capitalist society. There's some rules of a capitalist society, and one of the rules is that money motivations generate a very shallow uh, uh, motivation in that you will go and buy something because it's cheaper, because it's more expensive, because you've had a financial incentive from government, but you will feel no loyalty to that behaviour. And so much of the communication that we seem to be doing, especially with our corporate clients, is trying to give people a financial incentive or disincentive to act. And then people are surprised when that financial incentive or disincentive goes away, and it's on its course, and people go back to their old behaviour. It's like, that's what they're supposed to be doing. They're consumers. They are supposed to be going after the best financial deal. And when they're feeling a little bit flush on payday, or if they get a better job, or if the economy turns up or down, their behaviours are going to change. I'm not saying don't use money as a financial incentive, but be aware that if you want to embed a behaviour, especially a climate change behaviour, you're going to have to use more than money to be in there. And that final word on, um, on, on things to be aware of, but there's a really nice word for this, it's called psychological reactance. Basically it means fuck off. Right <laughs> on French. A lot of people's response to a request or a demand 